Hello, this is Mr. Keppel, and this is Fizzer number 12, Energy. I'm posting this video a little late due to some health issues, so this lesson is actually from first semester, even though it's currently second semester. The reason I'm posting this video is because there are many ideas in this video that you might want to refer back to as we move through second semester. This lesson is all about energy, and the second semester of physics is all about energy. So this is sort of the introduction to all of the concepts and ideas that we'll be learning about during second semester. So I thought it was pretty important to post this, even though I was unable to two months ago. Energy comes to the Earth in the form of sunlight. It is in the food we eat, and it sustains life. Without the energy from the sun, life as we know it would not exist on this planet. The reason we are able to live as humans is to eat food. But the way we get our energy from food is that a plant, at some point, had to harvest the sunlight, the energy from the sunlight, through photosynthesis. So if the sunlight didn't exist, if the energy from the sun didn't exist, we wouldn't have any food to eat, and we wouldn't be here. On the planet Earth, there's a symbiotic relationship between plants and animals, and all of this is based around energy. But the thing is, if I were to ask, what is energy? I can't tell you the answer to that. One does not simply define energy. Energy is such a big idea, such a huge topic. There are so many different pieces to it that you can't give a simple definition in only a few words. Even still, energy is one of the most important concepts in science. All disciplines of science involve the study of energy and we don't have a definition for it. It's extremely difficult to define, but it is very familiar. We don't really need a definition to understand what energy is. There are a lot of topics in science that are like that. It's an undefinable idea, but it's such a big idea that we're very familiar with it. We have lots of experience with energy in our day-to-day -day lives. We just can't precisely define it. So the solution in order to actually be able to define energy is to take this broad idea of energy and to divide it into smaller pieces, more specific types of energy, which we can define. And that's what we'll be doing now. The first type of energy we'll discuss is thermal energy. Thermal energy is basically the energy that an object has that results in its temperature. So the more thermal energy an object has, the higher its temperature will be. Essentially, anything that has a temperature, any object that has a temperature, has thermal energy. The next type of energy is electrical energy. We say that electrical energy is energy that's supplied by an electrical current, which is the flow of charged particles. So we know that positive charges and negative charges are attracted to each other. It's this electrical attraction which causes these charges to move, and that's called electrical energy. You can see an example here in the picture of lightning. It's a great example of electrical energy. But you know, there are other types of electrical energy, like you can think, like say your cell phone, or even the computer that you're looking at right now. These all work off of electrical energy, which is flowing charge. This is not thermal energy. This is actually chemical energy. In this picture, you're seeing a process of chemical energy being transformed into thermal energy, which is creating the fire. But where does this energy from the fire come from? Where does this heat come from? And it's coming from a chemical reaction between oxygen in the air and carbon in the wood. So this is actually a chemical reaction taking place. So anytime that energy is released through a chemical reaction, we call that chemical energy. The next form of energy is nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is energy released by a nuclear reaction. Don't confuse this with chemical reactions. Chemical reactions take place at a molecular level. A nuclear reaction takes place inside the nucleus of an atom. There are two ways that nuclear energy can be released from an atom. They are called fission, which is when a nucleus divides or splits in two. And there's fusion, which is when two nuclei fuse together combined together into one. 
This is nuclear energy. And lastly, we have mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the energy that an object has due to its movement or from its motion, from its speed. There's also another way that an object can have mechanical energy, and that's due to position. We notice that even though these workmen are not moving, we say they have mechanical energy because if they were to let go, they would fall and they would start to move. So mechanical energy takes two forms. Motion, which is called kinetic energy, and height or position, which is called potential energy. If you add these two energies together, take the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, the sum of these is mechanical energy. So once again, kinetic energy comes from the movement of something, potential energy comes from the location of something. Put them together, mechanical energy. You may find it interesting to know that we cannot directly detect or see energy. Energy can only be observed when it's being changed. We call this a transfer of energy or a transformation of energy. Take this geyser in the background for example. The only way that we're able to detect the energy is that we see this water shooting up out of the geyser. But what's actually taking place here is a transformation of energy. We have a transformation of energy from thermal energy, where the water is hot deep below the ground, into mechanical energy, where the water is pushed up out of the geyser. If there were no difference in temperature here, if this thermal energy were not transforming into mechanical energy, we would not be able to detect that thermal energy. The only way we're able to detect it is by its transformation into mechanical energy. So energy can only be detected when it's being changed. So clearly, energy transformation and energy transfer are very important concepts to understand. So let's define them. A transformation of energy is when energy is converted from one type into another. So it's changing forms, hence the name transformation, when energy changes forms. So for example, in the geyser, we have a thermal energy transforming into mechanical energy. The water is hot, the water starts to move. This is a energy transformation. An energy transfer is when energy is moved from one object into another object. So again, the example of the geyser. There is an energy transfer from the hot earth underground, the core of the earth, from the hot earth into the water. There is a transfer of energy from one object, the earth's core, to the other object, the water. Notice these two processes do not have to take place on their own. They can take place simultaneously. So simultaneously, while the energy is being transferred from the core of the earth to the water, it's also being transferred from thermal energy into mechanical energy when the geyser erupts. So these two processes can take place simultaneously, and most of the time they do. In order to help you distinguish between a transfer of energy and a transformation of energy, I prepared the following examples. A fighter jet gains speed and lifts off the runway. In this case, energy is being transformed from chemical energy in the jet fuel into mechanical energy of the airplane. There's a chemical reaction taking place when the fuel is burnt, and this chemical energy is transformed into mechanical energy, which allows the airplane to move and eventually lift off the ground. While this transformation of energy is taking place, we also have a transfer energy. Energy is being transferred from the fuel to the jet. So we have a transformation from one type of energy into another type of energy. In addition, we have a transfer energy from one object, the fuel, to another object, the jet. A wind turbine harnesses the wind to generate electricity. We have a transformation of energy from mechanical energy into electrical energy. The blades of the turbine are spinning. That's motion, mechanical energy. The turbine harnesses this motion, this mechanical energy, and transforms it into electrical energy. It generates electricity. There's also a transfer of energy taking place. The energy begins in mechanical, in the wind, and ends as electrical, stored in the electrons.
A space heater keeps you warm on a cold winter night. Energy is being transformed from electrical, you plug the heater into the wall, into thermal, the heater gets hot. While this transformation is taking place, we have a transfer energy. The electrical energy originates in the electrons. The electrons give their energy to the heating coil, and the heating coil gets hot. A firefighter climbs up a ladder. I want you to identify the energy transformation as well as the energy transfer. So I'll take a few moments to let you think about this and identify the transformation and the transfer of energy. When a person climbs up a ladder, energy is transformed from chemical energy into mechanical energy. The chemical energy originates inside the cells of our body and is then transferred to the entire body as a whole as it gains this elevation. Inside the cells in our bodies, there's a, there's a part called the mitochondria. In the mitochondria, inside the mitochondria, there's a chemical reaction taking place and our body is able to use this chemical energy in order to move or in this case in this case ascend a ladder and this is our last example an elevator carries passengers to the top of a building again i want you to identify the energy transformation as well as the energy transfer and take a moment to do that This example is very similar to our last example of the firefighter climbing the ladder. The only difference is that while the human body is powered by chemical reactions, an elevator is powered by electricity. So we have a transformation of electrical energy into mechanical, the elevator gains height, energy is transferred from electrons which store the electrical energy into the elevator as a whole as it rises up off the ground. Now that we understand the difference between a transformation energy and a transfer energy, let's talk about the physical mechanism by which energy is transformed. So in all cases, the transformation of energy requires two things. It requires a force and a distance. Whenever energy is transformed, there is always a force being applied over a distance. You can notice in the background there's a tire that has been melted away. This tire is sort of melting down. This is what happens when you step on the brakes of your car. The force of friction applies a force over a distance, bringing the car to a stop. So you have mechanical energy in the motion of the car transforming into thermal energy by friction. This transformation of energy is called work. And the formula for work is W equals FD. This formula is only true when the force and the distance point in the same direction. And furthermore, this formula is only true if the force is constant. But if we have a constant force and the force and the distance point the same direction, the work is simply the, the product of force and distance. When the archer draws the bow, is work being done. I want you to look at the definition of work we just wrote down and tell me, is work being done when an archer draws a bow?
If you said yes, you were right. The archer does work on the bow. He exerts a force across a distance. So he pulls back on the arrow. That force is applied over a distance. This is an example of work. Work is a transformation of energy. When he pulls the arrow back, energy is being transformed. Let's look at that. When he pulls back on the arrow and he draws the bow, energy is transformed from chemical energy into mechanical energy. The energy is transferred from his body, chemical energy in his body, to mechanical energy of the bow. The bowstring is stretched, it's tight, that's elastic potential energy, mechanical energy. So if you can identify whether work is being done or not, It'll help you understand the transformation and the transfer of energy. Let's look at another example. A weightlifter holds a barbell. Is work being done? The weightlifter is holding the barbell in place. He's not lifting it. He's holding it in place. Is work being done? Did you say he was doing work? Because he wasn't. No work is being done. The barbell does not move over a distance. The weightlifter is certainly applying a force on the barbell, but since the barbell does not move over a distance, there's no transformation of energy taking place. So energy is not transformed. Energy is not transferred. No work is done. You might have the question of, why does he get tired? If he's not doing any work, why is he getting tired? What's all this, sh why is he straining so hard? Why does it look like he's doing work? Why is he getting tired? The reason is because work is being done on his muscles, but not on the barbell. There is work being done in this situation. It's just being done on his body. It's not being done on the barbell. So this all leads us to the conservation of energy, which says energy can be transformed or transferred, but it cannot be created or destroyed. So if you're driving in a car and you want to stop your car, the brakes don't just destroy this energy. What the brakes do is they transform the mechanical energy of the car into thermal energy. And that's why your brake pads wear out because they get heated up. This friction, this rubbing causes the temperature to increase. So you're not just destroying this mechanical energy, you're transforming it. So the idea is that energy can change forms, but the total amount of energy doesn't change. If your car has 60,000 joules of energy when you're driving and you stop the car, then that means those 60,000 joules of energy were transformed into thermal energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed. Whatever amount of energy you begin with, you have to end with the same amount. This is known as conservation of energy. Since energy can't be created or destroyed during energy transformations and transfers, then we can actually trace the origin of all energy. For example, the light energy that this light bulb is releasing came from electrical energy when it passed through the filament in the light bulb. The light bulb gives off this energy as light. But where did the electrical energy come from? To find it, we go back to the power plant, which burned a fuel source to produce the electricity. So that was a transformation of thermal energy into electrical energy. But where did this thermal energy come from? The thermal energy was released when the fuel source was burned. For example, coal. 50% of the electricity in the United States comes from burning coal. And coal when, it, when coal is burned, there's a chemical reaction between the carbon in the coal and the oxygen in the air. And this chemical energy is released in this exothermic reaction, which produces the thermal energy. But where did the chemical energy that was stored in the coal, where did the chemical energy come from? To answer that, we need to know where the carbon itself that the coal was made of came from. 
the answer is that coal is actually ancient organisms it's made of ancient organisms and the ancient organisms got their carbon they built up their mass of carbon by a process known as photosynthesis which is where an organism takes sunlight and uses it to take carbon dioxide from the air and break it apart into oxygen and carbon and then the plant builds itself out of this carbon so actually the chemical energy in the coal came from solar energy essentially this solar energy was trapped away in the coal for millions of years until we burned it but where does solar energy come from to answer this question we need to know where the Sun itself gets its energy and that's from nuclear fusion inside the Sun hydrogen nuclei collide with each other and fuse together and when this process occurs energy is released but why is energy released why is it that two hydrogens fusing together releases energy the answer is e equals mc squared the energy released by a nuclear reaction comes from mass when two hydrogen nuclei fuse together a little bit of mass is converted into energy this is Einstein's famous equation which says that energy is equivalent to mass that essentially there is no such thing as energy rather it's mass energy so mass itself is a form of energy but this begs the question where does mass come from all the mass in the universe came from the Big Bang this is the moment of creation of the universe this is the beginning of time this is where all the mass comes from so look at what we've done we've traced the light released by a light bulb and that energy we've traced it we followed its origins all the way back to the Big Bang to the moment of the creation of the universe and all of this because the conservation energy energy cannot be created or destroyed which means whatever energy we see today must have come from the Big Bang the moment the universe was created all the energy in the universe was fixed and we can't get any more or any less than that amount of energy how about that this has been Mr. Keppel this is Fizzer number 12 energy I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in class